Greetings, viewer. Eric, the car guy here. Or should I say, viewers, plural. At least I hope there's more than one of you watching. Today I have a 1999 Acura 2.3 CL. I have been shooting a clutch video for the better part of the day and into the morrow. And something that's been requested of me quite a bit over the years is, Eric, you've got videos on how to change Honda automatic transmission fluid. What about manuals? Well, you know what? It just so happens that when you do a clutch job on one of these things, you have to change the fluid. So I'm gonna walk you through at least my process and give you a couple of pointers about other processes that might work better for you. And we will go through the step-by-step -step on how to change out the manual transmission fluid of this here uh, CL. As, as far as an Acura CL, those of you in Europe, you don't even know what an Acura is. They're all Hondas over there. Well, guess what? Underneath the skin of this thing, it's a Honda Accord. It's just got different badges on the front, different front end, different back end. Everything's the same. So everything that I'm showing you here will apply to a Honda Accord. There's a couple of those out there on the road yet. So uh, why don't we go through the process of changing that fluid. This is not a tool intensive operation, but I'm over on the right side of the vehicle. I've already lifted it up. Um, and I have a drip pan underneath here. Now I have already drained the fluid out of this. But uh, I guess the main thing is going to be showing you how to fill it because that's probably the trickiest part. But in order to uh, drain it, I want you to first remove the drain or the fill, fill plug, which is up here at the top. That is a 17 millimeter in size. And then you remove the drain plug here, which is really just a 3 8 drive. So it's, all you do is take a 3 8 ratchet, stick it inside there, knock it loose. And then drain the fluid out, and when it's all drained out, tighten it up. Now, good idea to replace the crush washers top and bottom, but these crush washers are in good shape, and I forgot to get new ones, so shame on me. As far as crush washers go, probably the only place you're going to find them that fit is going to be the Honda dealer. I haven't found any aftermarket ones that, like, fit like they should fit. So, I've got everything all drained out, and now I need to fill it. Well, there's a couple of things that I need to do first. I'm going to start by removing the fill plug and setting that aside. So here's the fill plug here. It just casually unscrews and you're good to go. Uh, but what I'm going to have to do next, I don't know if you noticed during the introduction of this video, that I had the front end of this vehicle jacked up. So right now, the front end is up way higher than the back end. I need to bring the back end up so this is level. If not, I'm going to underfill it because when this thing comes down level, all this fluid is going to be too low, so the fluid level will change. So I'm going to raise the rear of the vehicle, make it as level as possible, and then we're going to go through a couple of methods on how to fill this up. Well, I won't lie, it's not 100% perfect but I think it's gonna be good enough for my purposes. All right, I think I need to preface this by saying what type of fluid you should use. Number one at the top of the list is Honda manual transmission fluid. Get it from Honda, do it. It's, it's got special additives and things like that. I know the manual says that you can use 10W30 or 5W30, I can't remember which it is. However, I believe that also says that that is only a temporary thing to use. So use Honda manual transmission fluid However, I have experimented with and had success with GM Sigra Mesh fluid. So if you can't get your hands on Honda Genuine, I'd say a good second would be GM Synchro Mesh, Synchro Mesh Transmission Fluid. Now, how much are you going to need? Three quarts. In, in this Accord, and a Civic, and just about everything with a manual transmission that Honda's run, I've never put more than three quarts in. In fact, it takes a little, it takes almost three quarts. It doesn't take a full three quarts. So if you're going to go in and buy some, buy three quarts. Now, here's the part where you can go a couple of different ways. And that is how to fill this transmission. Now, I like to fill from up here, up at the top. And I have made a special tool. And what this does is, is it gives me a 90 degree bend. I got this off of... I think it was an old EGR pipe or something like that that I just cut and stuck this piece of rubber hose on and I'm able to slip this onto the end of my funnel and that's how I'm going to be doing it here. Now another method you might try and it's going to be kind of tr 
tricky to show you, I think. Yeah, I can barely, barely see it down in there. Is you'll see right where that connector is. Yeah, like I said, really difficult. Let me put an arrow on that. Way down there where that connector is, I'll put an arrow on it, is the speed sensor. Now, you can remove that speed sensor and stick a funnel in the hole where the speed sensor is. Word of caution, when you remove that speed sensor, it might be a little difficult. And uh, the, the modern ones on this, on this one are, uh, are plastic, so they can break. So be very careful when you go to remove that. Okay, so two methods. You can remove the speed sensor and stick your funnel down in that hole, or you can use my method, which is find some way to create a 90 degree bend to hook into the side. And quite simply, you do precisely that. You, you dump the fluid in until it starts to run out that fill hole, and you're done. I mean, it really doesn't get much easier. So uh, I'm gonna position you in such a way to where you can see where I'm inserting the funnel, and we'll take it from there. Now I realize I have what looks like four quarts here, but I had a couple of quarts that were sort of left over that I was using to top off, but you do just need three. And then simply, uh, make sure your, your catch pan is underneath when you do this because it will come running out. And this should be our last quart. And quite literally, you pour it in until it starts to run out. And that's full right there. I'll just take my funnel out, which reveals that I had quite a bit in there. I'll just let that even out for a second here. Don't want it to be too full. That could be an equal problem. It seems kind of wasteful though, don't it? I think that's 17. Tighten it up. Tidy it up a little bit. And that's it. That wasn't hard at all, was it? Like I said, simple enough. I cannot stress enough how important it is to use the correct fluid. Use either Honda or GM Synchromesh. Use anything else and it might burn up your bearings, be difficult to shift when it's cold, or a myriad of other problems that might show up that are fluid related. So real important to use the correct fluid here. Also, you may miss shifts, that kind of thing. Hard to say, but the, the correct fluid is, is all important. And I would say at the top of the list is the Honda OE fluid. So what kind of fluid do you use? Uh, but like I said, it's, it's not, a, not a difficult job at all. Just make sure you get it level. And as far as that speed sensor goes, you can pop that speed sensor out and fill it that way if you don't have that 90 degree bend thing. If you have one of those older models that has an actual speedometer cable that goes down into that uh, speed sensor and in a couple of lines going to the power steering system. If you have one of those, super careful. Those have a tendency to sort of rust into place. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's rust even though it's aluminum. Those have a tendency to rust into place and as a result they can be notoriously difficult to remove. So beware. So if you have some trouble getting that out of there and soak it with penetrating oil, do all that stuff, I try to find a 90 degree something to stick in there. I don't know if you'd be able to go through the wheel well or not. I think that would be extremely difficult or you could use like I have in the past in other videos some sort of pumping device to pump the fluid up into there. That's going to be your challenge. Your challenge for this is, is going to be figuring out a way to get the fluid in there. My 90 degree bend thing <laughs> works beautifully. I've used it for years. So that's what I do. As far as what you do, well that's up to you. Just use the right fluid. If you have automotive questions, I would ask that you direct them to ericthecarguy.com where at the top of the page you will find a search box. Type in a couple of keywords there and you may get an answer to your question right away. 
If you don't get a question, an answer to that question right away, then feel free to sign up for our forum. It's absolutely free. All you need is an email address. Just be sure to respond to the confirmation email. If you don't see it, look in your spam folder. And then you can ask your question over at the service and repair section over at our little forum. If you want to connect with me socially, I can be found at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I will close this video with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I will see you next time.